three, two, one. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to a wonderful episode of 15 Minutes of Fame with my favorite person in the world, my Aunt Deborah H. Johnson. <laughs> welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. It's good to be here. How fabulous is this? Oh, my gosh. I Bye. love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for taking out the time. Audience members, she is an accomplished author, entrepreneur, and minister, and she found time for my little show to share with us her knowledge about helping people with mental illness, helping people with structuring their children during a wonderful career path for sport, dance, or any of, any of the like. Welcome to the show. Please help us. We need you. Deborah Johnson. <laughs> Thank you so much. So it's where are you? Where are you? Tell everybody where you're from, what you do, da, da, da. Oh my gosh, I am from Columbus, Ohio. I live in Powell, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus. I have lived here. I'm a, I'm a native of Ohio, but I have lived here in Columbus for 30 years. Gosh, I can't believe that, 30 years. Mm -hmm. I came here for two years and I loved it and stayed. So I'm grateful to be here. Um, this is just an exciting time for us yes. to be able to share. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, welcome again to the show. Now, guys, we know that this show is normally about the entertainment field, but I asked my Aunt Debbie to come in so that she can share with, with us her style on how she was able to accomplish three young men into successful <laughs> careers. So I'm looking at my notes and we see that you are called AKA the football mom. How did you get that name? You know what, well, as you know, I have three sons. And all three of those young men, at some point in their life, played football. After a while, it caught on. Everyone started calling me the DJ, because I'm Deborah Johnson, and the football mom, because for mm -hmm. them, I was all things football. Um, my oldest son, Jay, um, started off in middle school, uh, played, you know, just was an, out, just an outstanding athlete in high school, uh, got offers all over the country. Yeah. I went to the Ohio State University, which is my alma mater. And when he got there, I was so used to being involved as a parent mm -hmm. in his career. And now we're mm -hmm. at this, you know, billion dollar corporation that is the Ohio State University. And I was yeah. trying to figure out where do I fit in in all of this? So that got me further entrenched into the moniker of the mm -hmm. football mom because I became the founder of the Ohio State uh, football parents association at ohio state and then my middle child who now was my a youngest son, out, track who star, absolutely but he also hated everything sports, and he looked seriously at me and said, if you, you can just imagine a young man is the way growing up in the shadow of two big old brothers uh, but he's a writer in the and before i knew it two brothers i was are really six, getting into understanding five, nine, recruiting for football how to get parents sports. involved before I know, so knew it, I was talking to football I think he parents just, at, and that's know, something Midwest we'll talk about later, but just want to admit it. The, the like you know, he's, he was a standout singer, dancer, you know, mm -hmm. entertainer in the choir, but he wanted to try football and he did for two years. And then he was like, I'm done. But he, he found it. track. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He found track, found it something individual and mm -hmm. he could do it. And it was his, he could do his own thing with it. So that's how I became the football mom. And I began, the people still know me. They go, hey, football mom, how are you? Uh, that's how they see me. Yes, indeed. I love that name. So let me just segue now into, you're an author, an accomplished author. So what made you decide to write a book? And what is the name of the book? And how can people contact you or contact the website to get your book? Okay. The, well, the first thing is the name of the book is Coaching the Dream. 
And the way that I came about, you know, came, came about writing this book, you know, everyone thinks when they meet me and they find mm -hmm. out that my oldest son was in the NFL, they're always sure this book is all about the NFL. And mm -hmm. I said, no, no, the real lessons that I learned were from my younger children. When I realized you can coach your child to be anything they want to be. It doesn't matter what their dream is. It's just mm -hmm. that you have to get a good understanding of what your child is trying to tell you. Children leave clues. They are constantly mm -hmm. showing you who they are. Mm -hmm. And when you find out, and our middle child, Josh said, Ma, I need you. I need you. I, he had a plan for himself. Like he had figured mm -hmm. it out. He said, "There's he's a brilliant young man. And he said, there's more money. He said, there's always this fight for academic scholarships. There's more mm -hmm. money. He loves sport. And so he said, and he was a standout mm -hmm. track star, but he said, there's more money in football. He said, Ma, I know you know how to do this. You know how to do this. I need one football scholarship. Can you help me? And we made a pact. And mm -hmm. I said, Joshua, do you know how much work this is? What I want, I'll be willing to work with you. I'm going to partner with you to do this. But what I'll tell you is you can't mm -hmm. say no unless you have another yes. So if you get a yes, you got to work with that yes until you get another yes. And so my mm -hmm. book is really about what happens when you have children, I have three sons who are very different. Mm -hmm. What happens when they all have a dream to do something? It's not the same dream. Right. You know, you start using one set of skills. You know, I got tricked. You know, as a mom, I really got tricked. The first child was so easy. I said, oh gosh, I could have five kids. Mm -hmm. And then you get your next one and you realize, oh, they're not the same. Mm -hmm. Same parent. I have two kids with the same, <laughs> not the same. So the yeah. second child now needs different things, wants different things. And then the baby boy, you know, I call him my bonus child. I mm -hmm. got remarried and got this amazing young baby boy with totally different dreams. Right. And this is about the fact of when you're the parent, what does it look like to be an advocate for your child? It doesn't matter if it's a girl or a boy. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter if they want the moon or they just want a comfortable life. How mm -hmm. do you coach them into that reality so that when you usher them out of your front door, you right. can sleep at night and you can yeah. say to you, job well done, mama. I, I've done all that I know to do. My child's on their way. How do I partner with my child for success? Mm -hmm. So that's what the book is about. You can get the book on Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. The book is called Coaching the Dream, and it is under Deborah H. Johnson. Uh, you can always look at my Facebook, uh, which is uh, Coaching the Dream book, and you'll see you know, links to, to be able to get the book. Uh, you mm -hmm. can catch me up on IG at DJ the Football Mom. And, you know, I, and I re regularly, regularly interact with parents. So you can also get me at DJ the Football Mom at Gmail, if you just want to send me a note or you want to talk about your child or talk about things that, you know, that you'd like to, to do with your child. It's not just about football because sometimes parents will walk right. up to me and say, but what about kids who don't want to play football? And I said, well, lots of, lots of kids don't want to play football, but mm -hmm. this book really is just my formula and my, my journey with my three children and the lessons that I learned on how to get, the, get them from where they were to where they wanted to be just their own personal plan for their own success. So would I um, be horrible if I asked for maybe one or two strategies that you can just, you know, let us know about to get us oh, ready to read the book? Absolutely. Let me just okay. give you some. And I will, you, they will be broken down in the book. Yes. But I tell parents, and I'm, I mean this in all sincerity, mm -hmm. you are your child's advocate. When you hear coach, you think about, the, 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 the people who are surrounding that person, but the coach is not a fan. And if they're mm -hmm. a fan in, in, that, in that they are caring for the team, they want to root the team on, but at the end of the day, they are watching, they're hovering, they're making sure that they're there. They're an ally. They're mm -hmm. saying, I'm your best friend in this process. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you where you're stepping wrong. I'm mm -hmm. going to be the person you don't even want to talk to. Everybody knows what it is. You, you know about coaching people. You, mm -hmm. Sometimes they don't even want to see you. Do we have to yeah. do that one more time? We just mm -hmm. did that for the 10th time. Right. That's what it is. So you can't be your child's best friend and their coach. You can be their coach. And when you read that chapter about being an advocate for your child, mm -hmm. 
the big takeaway I want you to take away from my book is nobody cares about your child more than you do. Trust your mm -hmm. gut. This is your child. Nobody will and nobody should care about your child more than you do, except mm -hmm. for the Lord Almighty. You're, you are your child's biggest advocate and they give you clues and you can see things that mm -hmm. other people can't see. You know when your child's going to be really good when nobody believes in them but you. And you're the person then can, that can be that big voice in their ear. Let me ask you right there. You said something. Um, you want to be there for them and believe in them because not everybody will. What do you suggest we do for kids that are on the fence? They are, they're talented but mm -hmm. they just kind of don't have it to make it. And as a parent, you recognize it. You're saying, okay, maybe they need to strengthen this. Maybe they need to study more. Maybe they need to do this. How do you keep them inspired while still pushing them ahead without hurting feelings, without, you know what I mean? Oh, How exactly. do you do that? Keeping them inspired and letting them know, well, let me let you tell it. I'm not going to tell the story. You explain well, what you is your child has to draw their own conclusions with your coaching it it takes the right mm -hmm. amount of coaching for your yeah. child to finally have to face say for instance and especially when your children are young they will say you know your child has two left feet you you can't even imagine them imagining them being a gymnast say mm -hmm. they, but you but they're sure they want to be a gymnast You've already been told that your child's in the 98th percentile. They're going to be 6'5". Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a girl that's going to be tall. She's probably not going to be a gymnast. But you uh, just ask them, well, what, uh, um, what, what, what are the qualifications for gymnasts? Like, what's the typical gymnast profile? Mm -hmm. And um, they'll say, well, I don't know. I, I just like watching the Olympics. And I said, well, why don't we look into that? Why don't you go and do some research? And let's talk about what it'll take so we can mm -hmm. see what we need to do. So then yeah. the child they starts to research things. Pretty soon they start drawing their own conclusions about certain things, but you have to challenge them. You never know. Children mm -hmm. bloom at different times. So what we might be yep. seeing one moment may not be true for next year. So we might be thinking my child that went to the NFL was a horrible player when he was in middle school, middle school. his mm -hmm. arms were too long. He's uncoordinated because he was growing so fast. Um, his knees were hurting. All the things that happen when a, when a person's going to be six, six at that point, you know, you're, you're not thinking mm -hmm. about them being in the NFL. You're just hoping they enjoy the game. Sure. Overnight, it seemed two years later, he's in, he's in 10th grade and he's over six feet tall. And all of a sudden he's coming into his stride. And before mm. you know it, he's starting. So you never know where they're gonna yeah. be. You have to be honest with your child. Um, you don't have to break their spirit, but sure. what you have to do, if they're insistent, then walk it out with them. Say, okay, mm -hmm. let's, let's go do it. But mm -hmm. after they've done it a while and it's, they're not having that success and they're putting forth their absolute best effort, mm -hmm. you have to sit down and say, Hey, let's, 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 let's regroup here. Right. Let's think of, is this going to be the best strategy for moving forward? What other things are you interested in? I, I yeah. understand your heart and it is heartbreaking. We've all had, yes. uh, you know, we've yeah, had let's dream. talk about you. Let me find out what your dream was. How did you fall in love with sports so much? Like how did this? Okay. As you know, I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio. So the Browns were like the biggest thing ever when I was coming up. And I loved watching sports. And my mom, mm -hmm. it, believe it or not, loved watching sports, baseball, football. Most of the time, she didn't even understand football. She said she just loved watching them run with that ball. And so mm -hmm. I would sit and watch with my mom. I'd go to the games with my sisters. I'd go to baseball. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I just had a natural love for watching people work together and succeed at that. I love the cheering. I love how it brought a whole community together. It brought our whole family together when the boys started really excelling. All of a sudden, we're getting together to go to, go to games. All of a yeah. sudden, we're on the phone talking. I just saw Jay on TV. I just saw this. It brings your whole family together. So for me, mm -hmm. sports was a way for not just for what was happening on the field, but all the stuff that was happening with the family and off the field. What happens in a community who rallies behind something? That's awesome. I never thought of it that way. I was never a sports sports person, 
But you yeah. guys got me into it between, you know, <laughs> going to Dave's games and all. Absolutely. So let's talk about burnout because that's a lot. I mean, like you said, it's a community event. So there's a lot of pressure. People, are you going to the game? Are you doing this? You better, you better win. You better win. So yeah. let's talk about the burnout of it all and how to handle that. Let me tell we you, have a lot of that in dance too. It, it's a lot of that in anything where a light's being shown on you. So yeah. when you someplace and you're being elevated, you know, I tell mm -hmm. parents, make sure your kid knows what they're signing up for. When a parent comes yeah. to me sometimes and they'll say, my child is worn out. Can, I can't, kids get death threats in big sports, Ooh. football, Ooh, wow. basketball, when people are riding on it, just imagine people are gambling on sports. Um, so wait, I'm going to, that's what, go back to the death threat uh, thing. That's huge. That's, so let's talk that's, about that's, that. It's huge. Um, I can't, I can't even express to you living in central Ohio, mm -hmm. where football, where the Ohio state football is bigger than the NFL. Seriously. Oh, wow. Kids are born growing up wanting to be a Buckeye. We have people who graduated from other schools, but are head to toe Buckeye. They never mm. missed a game. We'll talk to people and they'll say they haven't missed a game since the 1960s. Okay. So they're, their joy is every Saturday doing football season for this winning team. And if your child happens to be the child who misses a tackle, yeah. who drops the ball, that means the difference between a national championship, a Big Ten championship, us going to the next level, people are angry people are fanatics that's where fan comes from people mm -hmm. are fanatical not in just the way that they dress from head to toe mm -hmm. but they absolutely believe sometimes that you owe them something sometimes i've had to back people up and i'll say oh my gosh no where did you play well i didn't play anywhere exactly mm -hmm. it's this tough mm -hmm. these are kids i'll have to keep saying you know they're they're 19 mm -hmm. years old they're 18 years old mm -hmm. you know the stress of it all but not only that there's a young person, and I know you've seen it in dance, where the young person in their heart is just going, I just, I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to let my mom down. I don't want to let my dad down. Yeah. I don't want to let my community down, my team mm -hmm. down. But they might be having a bad day. What people don't understand is we often objectify people, not just athletes, but mm -hmm. people by what they do. So they say, Dawn has a dance company. She's a dancer. She's a, mm -hmm. And so when somebody says something else about you, like maybe they'll find out you can sing. They'll say, really? Dawn? Mm -hmm. She's a dancer. Because mm -hmm. they don't realize that dancers might be good at finance. Dancers mm -hmm. might be able to be, right, drive race cars. You know, mm -hmm. just because, and the other side of it, regardless of your success, you still got to pay your bills. You still get the flu. Mm -hmm. You still have people that die. You still have yeah. to pull your grass or pay somebody to do it. You still yeah. are in car accidents. You, you get in traffic jams, you don't make it someplace. That's where the stress comes from. So now you have this major world on your shoulder and this, this, this need to succeed. And maybe it's on the day that you just got a diagnosis about your mom that she's very yeah. ill. But mm -hmm. people are still expecting you to get out there and do what you need to do. Young mm -hmm. people, romance, you know, when kids are in their, you know, early 20s, late, late teens, real serious. They have a major breakup with their girlfriend or boyfriend. I used to ask my, my oldest son, you don't ever date anybody? He says, Ma, I don't need anybody in my head when yeah, I'm trying. It's a lot of stress. Yeah. yeah. Now you're trying to manage that. Now you're trying, you're managing expectations. And then mm -hmm. you're just trying to figure out who you are. Right. I mean, people are still growing into who they're going to be their brains are not even fully function functioning mm -hmm. but now they've got to do grown-up stuff they've got grown-ups on their case and saying you know we're counting on you you know you're you're going to be the difference in us making that championship we we mm -hmm. hope that you get you know a 10 when you're when you're out there today and now you're mm -hmm. thinking oh my gosh and they're just and sometimes they're trying to figure out do I still want to do that I don't know mm -hmm. if you know the statistic, but somewhere mm -hmm. around 70% mm -hmm. of young kids who have started in Little League, by the time they're 13, they're ready to stop sports. Oh, wow. They're tired. Mm 
Can you imagine mm -hmm. from the time you were, say, three years old, you've mm -hmm. been playing a sport every season. Your parents have you in t-ball. Then they have you in little league basketball. Then you're mm -hmm. in soccer. Then you're in some other little camp. And before you know it, you're 13 and all you want to do is just be a kid. You yeah. don't want to six in the morning. You don't want to have to practice another time. So what do, what do you say to the child that you know they definitely have the qualifications and you know they can make it, they're just a little burnt out. What do you say? Tell, tell, tell the parents what to say to the child well, so they won't yeah. give up and stop right. at 13. How do we keep them going? Well, let me tell you, we can't, we can't, let me be honest. You cannot okay. always keep them going. Mm -hmm. The reality of it is you've got to really take a step back mm -hmm. and really spend some time with them. If you find out they're just tired, because they might just tell you, they might be saying it, but what they're really trying to tell you is, I just need a time out. Yeah. I need a time out. Mm -hmm. If I could just not play eighth grade I think I could <laughs> that just, sounds so crazy I'm sorry just, if I could just... and then I could go to ninth grade and I might be a little <laughs> more I just want one year when I and, and they don't know how to do that because you've already got all your gear on you're ready right. to go everybody yeah. knows you. you've already paid tuition a year in advance <laughs> That's right. and let's be clear how many times have I talked to a parent who said mm -hmm. to me Deb we are we are we are this is this is our ticket this is our ticket. We have put a lot of money into this. By the time they are 13, sometimes parents with travel leagues, you know about travel leagues, mm -hmm. by the time they got to that point, they put in thousands and thousands right. of dollars. Yep. And, and the reality of it is the average scholarship, not just, I'm not talking about football, just across the board sports scholarship, the average mm -hmm. is worth a couple of thousand dollars. You could have literally just saved that money and let the kid just go to, get, just let them go to school. Right. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is when they really want to and they're tired, you just have to have a conversation. Like, what's going That's on? Here? And yeah. you've mm -hmm. got to challenge coaches, too. I've done it before. Go I ahead, tell us. Mm -hmm. I have my coach telling my child in ninth grade, he couldn't go on our family vacation right. because he had to be in the non-mandatory, mandatory training. And if he, and if he missed a day, Mm -hmm. He was not going to be in contention, in contention for this Iron Man award. And I just looked at the coach and said, look, this is the only time my child has to be a child, to have fine family time. And guess what? It's going to be okay if he doesn't get the Iron Man award. But this is the only time we have with our child for the summer. He is taking off. We are going on vacation. And he mm -hmm. said, well, he won't start. And I said, I said, well, who do you have starting? I don't know, but it's not going to be him. And I said, well, okay, that's, that's fine. He did mm -hmm. start that season because he was a standout player. But the mm -hmm. reality of it is you have to sometimes make a unpopular stand, even with your child. Sometimes when you see that they are really tired mm -hmm. or there's, let me tell you, parents, I just want to stop right here. Never, ever, ever let your child play hurt. If your child is running a fever, they, they don't need to be on stage singing just because it's their concert. Because when they mm -hmm. wear out their body, it's the only one they get. They'll have another time. Mm -hmm. But you have to show them value that I care about you. Mm -hmm. That this is fine. We love that you love the sport. But what we love more is you. And we want you to have the best possible outcomes. That's, awesome. that's really important. Yes. Thank you for that. So not only you are, are you an accomplished author with your book, Coach the Dream, Coaching mm -hmm. the Dream, but you also are an entrepreneur and you have your own company and that's called The Gold Minded, yes? Tell that's us right. a little bit about I, that. But I started working with parents a long time ago. My background mm -hmm. is HR. So for 20 years, I was working for the Department of Defense. I started off as a presidential intern when I got out of graduate school and I learned all things HR. When I left my job and I quit my job after 20 years of working to come home because my children really needed me. They needed me at home. Um, the oldest one was a standout athlete. The middle one was dealing with depression. The baby boy is dyslexic and was dealing with trying to learn how to read in third grade. And there was nothing more important to me at that time than making sure that they were gonna be prepared for the next level. And me staying at work was not gonna do it. So I came home. And when I came home, I started meeting other parents. 
I started meeting other people who needed support that I was able to give them. It started off with me just coaching people on you know, their career success. Before I knew it, we started working with groups of young people, uh, started a foundation called the Jay Richardson Foundation, and started working with them on coming up with a personal plan for their own success. But it's always been, I've always been that person. Yes. Who rooting for someone else. You are just a coach for, all around. I love it. That they get to where they want to be. Mm-hmm. And honestly, the best place to be is where you are just rooting for someone and helping them to see where it is they want to go. Because coaching is all about finding out what it is the person wants to do mm-hmm. and then just walking alongside them to help them get there when they're stumbling, when they're feeling unsure, when they're trying to mm-hmm. figure something out, now you're those set of ears. Okay, I spend so more, much as, yeah, much as I talk. I wanted I to spend, ask you about that. Um, so if a person, a parent out there wanted to get some coaching from you for some life skill coaching, how mm-hmm. does that happen? Is it virtual? Like, um, is, is it on the website? Tell us a little bit how to get started with you. Well, the way to get started with me is that just reach out to me. So DJ the football mom at gmail.com. So you, you reach out to me, number one. Number two, we can set it up to what's comfortable for you. Some people just want to call in and they call me okay. up, we mm-hmm. chat. Other people say, I do better when I can see the person I'm talking to. So we set up mm-hmm. a video chat and we chat about it. If they happen to be okay. in the area, uh, then, then I'll meet with them one-on-one. But we, there's, thank God for technology that yeah. I can meet you wherever you are and walk you through. I've had parents at every level reach out to me. I have parents have found me from Minnesota and said, nice. My son, mm-hmm. and I do want to share this little bitty story. This woman called mm-hmm. me up almost in tears and she said, my son has now reached out to over a hundred agents and nobody will represent him. And I really, mm-hmm. we, he's been trying out, um, his coach is not working with him. And the hardest conversation I had to have with a parent was to be able to tell that parent, your son's just not at that level. Your son is not going to be at that level. Uh, agents for people who are who have the potential for that level, who have the skill set for that level, they are beating your door down. If you have mm-hmm. called 100 agents and nobody will represent you, it's because that's not going to be the path for your child. Okay, let's stop there and let's talk about college and majors. Yes. What do you suggest? Because this can happen. You get through the school, you get through college and you're not good enough and nobody's hiring you. What type of degree would you suggest a diehard sports person accomplish so that if they don't get picked up, they could still some kind of way work in sports in some capacity? what do you suggest they do? Well, I'll tell you this. Mm-hmm. I would say the obvious thing people will say, people would probably say sports management, um, yes. maybe communications, maybe journalism, and you could be a mm-hmm. sports writer. Mm-hmm. But, but from, the, from, the, from the DJ, the football mom, right. <laughs> of coaching, mm-hmm. I need you to hear this anyone, anywhere. And I'm talking to people who don't even have children. Just if you're trying to figure out what do I major in? Do what you love. When you do what you love, you will get all into it. You will excel. You will find a good place to land. I was a French major. People don't know that about me. I was a French major. And people kept asking me, your uncle Ed said to me, if you're going to be a French major, you may as well go on welfare. They make about the same amount of money. What are you going to do with a French degree, Deb? This was in the 70s. But guess what? I had been speaking French since I was in second grade. I loved French. So guess what? I majored in French. I went to France. I studied in France. I enjoyed school because I was doing what I love. It wasn't hard for me to go to class because I wasn't trying to impress anybody but me. I enjoyed speaking (laughs) French. I left college, you know, graduated. And then I went to the Peace Corps to a French speaking country. Well, little did I know, I came back home never intending to teach, but I taught for a little while, then decided to get a graduate degree. I got a graduate, I had been helping a woman who was helping elderly people in the city um, to have the services that they needed. She turned me on to a degree 
uh, at the top school in the country in human services mm -hmm. management because I knew I loved to help people. I loved helping the elderly. I got a degree from Brandeis mm -hmm. University and it parlayed that French degree and that degree into a presidential internship, fell into HR, didn't know anything about HR except for when you go and apply for a job. And I became, I got to the top of my game where I was doing that, traveled the world, lived on Guam. I mean, just lived in, it was at a headquarters in Virginia, came here and helped build a federal agency, all with that French degree, because I loved it so much. Hi, Uncle Liz. <laughs> right. <laughs> do what well, you love. Do what you love. I love that. So let you me see? ask you, do yeah. you love TV? I love TV. Oh my gosh. That's I what we're about to get into right now. My Aunt Deb has been on so many TV shows. We're about to share this with you now. Before I mean, you, you've gone before I do, go ahead. I want to tell you something that you don't that yes. you don't know probably. Uh-oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. That your Aunt Deb started in her first television show in high yeah. school. Oh. I was, I was a regular on a show called Youth and the Law. Okay. And I was, I was, we asked, we asked an attorney. I, it was, a, it was a nationally syndicated show. Mm -hmm. And th that's my football mom stuff you're looking at. So that mm -hmm. those, now these are parents that became my buddies. Oh my gosh. This is the joy of getting behind your child with whatever they're doing. It mm -hmm. comes with another group of parents who are doing the same thing mm -hmm. and you get to have a bond where you don't have to know everything. If right. you don't, another parent knows it. When one is down, the other one's picking you up. That's a wonderful thing. Okay, and what is, what's this? So here's your TV show thing here. What oh is this one? Oh gosh, I had the joy. I'm a member of the Professional Football Players Mothers Association, which is a fabulous organization for mm -hmm. NFL moms who are dedicated to not only helping other NFL moms, but all moms whose children are playing football and helping them to find their way. So we have gotten to, through our sons, the pinnacle of being a football person. When your kid gets to the NFL, that's as high as they can go. And it comes with its own set of issues and whatnot. And you finally have a support group. Well, when I got there, I found out that Eddie George, who you see sitting down, down for me, his wife, Taj, is sitting next to me, and that's Dr. Oz. He was helping moms to get in shape. He felt like NFL moms spend so much time supporting their kids, they're not taking care of themselves. And so he partnered with Dr. Oz the first year that that show was on, and he had us do an NFL mom's ultimate health challenge. I was the captain for the AFC team. Uh, there was another woman, Michelle Green, the captain for the NFL, NF, NFC team. And we were gonna see who could get in the best shape during the football season. We had five months to get in shape with the help of Dr. Oz. I was on the show four different times and I was their overall winner. I lost yeah. 52 pounds. I got my blood pressure just almost perfect, he said. My cholesterol was amazing. All this stuff was, I mean, it was just fabulous, but we worked together as moms and it wasn't just mm -hmm. about us. It was right. about a group of NFL moms who were being vulnerable by showing their weight and their cholesterol and their health to help other moms. 50 million people watched that show. Wow. And we were to do that. And we were pretty excited about that. Okay. Now let's take us, oh, here you are on another TV show. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what, what, the talk. What, I was the Campbell Soup's, Campbell Soup's mom um, to, help, to help people address, help women address their health. Can um, I stop a, for one second? Look how beautiful you are. Oh, Aunt Debbie. Oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I love that. This is, the, this is the joy of family, right? Well, in this picture, it was right before I went on the talk. I was meeting with Holly Robinson Pete right before the Super Bowl, the week before the Super Bowl. And I was sharing recipes and tips on how you could have fun at the Super Bowl and keep it healthy and to really help other moms and, and women address their heart, uh, make sure that they knew their numbers, that they knew what their cholesterol was, their, their blood pressure, their weight, their waistline, so that they could work hard to address their health. It's the number one killer of women and it's 10 times, it kills 10 times more women than any other disease. 
So it's a really big deal. So that that was me doing my Address Your Heart campaign. Okay, and where are we here? If you see me there, that's Joe Paterno. And I was at Penn State with our professional football players, football moms. And we were up there because we were going to be playing football in Orange County, California against the NBA moms, against chefs. Oh, moms. that's so much up fun. Moms, And we were up there to get trained on how to play football. Like I thought this was just going to be a charity thing, but it wasn't just charity thing. We had coach Larry Johnson, who is phenomenal. He is the defensive coordinator at Ohio state. And Larry said, I don't lose in anything. He gave us a playbook. Parents, you got to have a playbook. <laughs> he gave us a playbook with all these different plays we had to learn. It was like 20 different plays that we had wow. to learn from May until July. So when we got to Orange County, we were going to make sure we were going to beat the NBA moms. We beat them 14 to zip. They were oh, not prepared. Wow. They were not prepared for us. <laughs> okay. Where is this? Oh my gosh. This is me and Jan, oh my gosh, this Jan Baker, Coach Tressel, we were on NBC's show that day talking about, it was Mother's Day, it was the first Mother's Day that I was an OS, OSU mom. So two, two OSU moms on the Mindy Dreyer show with Coach Tressel, who had the number one recruiting class in the country. He recruited Jay and we were on there talking about what it meant to be football moms how special mother's day was Aww. when you're a football mom it was it was a lot of fun oh my gosh we have so, much so fun. famous okay oh, so now let's see what else we have let's see. When I oh that's, that's that's you that's me oh gosh that's joshua, and that's our, joshua. oh that's our, hey josh yeah joshua was a scholar athlete at at kansas and joshua mm -hmm. is really the catalyst for the story mm -hmm. that i wrote in coaching the dream. Joshua was no joke about his dream. He said, Ma, I just want to write, but school costs a lot of money. I said, Well, then consider football your part-time job. And that's exactly what happened. He was happened. He was battling depression. He worked through his depression in college. He was able to excel at writing. He fell in love with English, was an English, English major, and was a scholar athlete. So awesome. it's not always just about what's happening on the field. Yes. They have a plan. His plan was to do this off the field. Awesome. So that was a big deal. That was a real big deal. Oh, this there is one of the fun moments. That is Eddie See? George, the Heisman Trophy winning Eddie George. And Eddie and I went to the Super Bowl and we interviewed with about, oh, I don't know, 20 different stations, including John Thompson talking about Campbell's program about addressing your health. And he was there to interview with me and because he has a, a, a wonderful organization to help people to address their health. It's near and dear to his heart. He's an amazing mm -hmm. man. And I just felt honored to be there with him doing what I was of doing. Of course. I want to talk about the addressing the health too. Like yeah. what, um, you raised three boys, three big yeah. boys, big right? Boys. All athletes. All athletes. Talk to us a little bit about um, their daily, you know, food supply, not food supply, but their menu. Like, how did you manage I, all of that and, and talk about that a little bit? Well, I just remember one funny story when my mom came and watched the children while I was traveling from my job. And she called me up and she said, Deb, Jay just ate a slab and a half of ribs. Do you stop him at some point? <laughs> and I started to laugh. I said, Ma, he's in a growth spurt. You just got to let him eat. But I nutrition, tried nutrition. Let's talk about nutrition now with that. So let's okay. talk about how you have the balance. Serious balance. When your child is in a major growth spurt, sometimes they just need to eat. So you have to have things available for them to eat. I had, you know, you keep fruit, you keep all kinds of veggies. You let me tell you this, you teach them how to cook. Every mm. single one of our children. Hi, can, Uncle Glenn. <laughs> That's right. My, and between the two of us, we taught them how to cook. Is is when they were old enough to open up the refrigerator, we would have a bowl of cereal with a glass of milk. They could open it up and pour it in. That was mm -hmm. a subtle message to help them to understand that you're in charge of your health as well. If you're yeah. hungry, 
you can fix yourself something to eat. Then you keep mm -hmm. things available. If you don't want them to eat a lot of junk, don't buy a lot of junk. They're going to eat whatever's there. That's just what mm -hmm. young people do. You have to also have to eat, find what they like. You know, yeah. if, if you know broccoli's good, but every time they eat it, they, they, they just won't eat it. Maybe they don't mm -hmm. like broccoli. Maybe broccoli's not even their food of choice or good, something mm -hmm. good for them. Find a veg veggie that works. Test mm -hmm. out things. The rule in our house was you've got to try it once. Unless we know for sure you're allergic. But if you try it once and you look at me in the eye and say, I don't even like that. You never mm -hmm. have to do that again. We'll find another substitute. Yeah. Like balance, you know, um, you can't have pizza every day. I hear parents say they drive through. They say, well, Deborah, you have no idea. I do have an idea. I used to mm -hmm. work 40 hours a week and, and travel with my job and have to keep food on the table. My husband worked 12 hours a day. You have to plan. Sometimes you have mm -hmm. to plan on the weekends. You get them involved. You take them to the grocery store. You help them pick mm -hmm. out what they like. You make it easy for them so that they can just pop it in, you know, cut slicing them up already. I already have it marinating. Show them how you can just do this with microwaves. You can do all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff, there. but don't, a lot of sodium is not good. You know, natural mm -hmm. is better. Whole foods are better, but if they yeah. know once a week, we're going to have fun. They're going to eat the thing that we absolutely enjoy. They'll, they'll work with the other stuff, but yeah. you have to keep balance with that. Now yeah, I want to go back to the recruitment and the young lady that came to you and could not find an agent. Yeah. Um, talk to me about becoming a self, what is it called when they're just an independent person and how do they go about doing that? And how do you coach them into properly doing, I guess in dance it's called auditions, but I don't know what it's called in right. your world. When like, you were Talk to us right. about that. When you identify that your child has the potential to really go far and you'll know it. I mean, you'll just, it'll hit you one day. You'll see mm -hmm. either people will keep walking up to you like they used to do to me. And you realize, okay, my child has something here. Mm -hmm. You start doing your research. Do not wait for people to come to you. I think the mistake that parents okay. make, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh my God, my child is really talented. My coach says he's really good. And so they think the coach, Correct. The coach will do it all. Yeah. And guess what? They're being paid, the coaches, to coach that team. They're being paid to win games. If they happen to promote your child, so mm -hmm. be it. But don't let that be because so many parents, and I just literally have been in tears when I meet a kid who's so talented. And mm -hmm. I said, well, why didn't you call the, why didn't you call this coach? She said, I didn't even realize all those letters were there. I was waiting okay. for his coach. They'll say, wasn't that the coach's job? No, it's your job. If your mm -hmm. child, I, I met with a family and it was senior year and mm -hmm. they were still waiting for a big break and it hadn't happened. And I looked at the young man and I said, was well, any coach paid any attention to you? And he said, well, yeah, there's a, there was a coach at a school not far away from us that was really looking at him. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, he said that they were really interested, uh, but he was interested in a bigger school that was not going to come his way. He didn't have the frame for that bigger school. I said, well, why don't you give him a call? Why don't you tell him? I'm thinking back to the conversation we had last year and I could really see myself playing there. So let me, let me, I hear what you're saying. So there are no rules. You are allowed to contact the coach. It's not Absolutely. like, okay. In fact, well, see, as a, as a, the coach when the coach can't contact the child like they may not be able to initiate a call but you this is what i want to get across there are yeah. no ncaa rules for how sure. you manage your child to connect with the school i tell parents if you are going on your vacation and this, this is for anything but not just for sports but if you're going on vacation and you're passing a number of schools along the way stop in let them see what a campus looks like. Let them see what a big one looks like as opposed to a smaller one. Um, if there's mm -hmm. somebody around, see if they can give you a quick tour. Let them get a sense for it because that starts the process. But seriously, if you say, if your child says, boy, I'd I love to go there, 
Go meet with the coach. You know how many coaches I have met with on behalf of my middle child in particular? We would just go. When Jay was starting to look at schools, I would take mm -hmm. kids along with me. So if we were driving up to Michigan State, I took girls as well as boys. I said, you know, mm -hmm. what? they have your major there too. Why don't you come go? We went all the way up to Michigan State, then Michigan. We would just go along. We just, whenever we go to a school, we take another young man or young woman along with us and ask questions. You can mm -hmm. ask all kinds of questions. This is your child. Do your research, just like you would do for a job. Do your research. Find out if they have your major. Sometimes your kids right. fall in love with the school, but they don't even have their major. Don't settle. Don't settle. The child who knows they're amazing in engineering, but settles for a school that doesn't even have an engineering program because they thought they were going to excel in football until yeah. they broke their leg. And now they can't mm -hmm. play. Or they had the second concussion and now they can't play. Now they're at a school that they don't even mm -hmm. like with, and they don't even have their major. Yeah. Do yeah. your research. And, and this is all the stuff you go, when you're meetings, when you have your parent coaching meetings, these are the things that you go through. We come, mm -hmm. yeah. What I do yeah. is I craft mm -hmm. a personal plan for their success. Great. It's not about, not about the schools I'm interested in. It's a personal plan based on their child's skill set, their desires. Um, maybe they have, they, sometimes it's geographical. They'll say, you know what? He doesn't want to go out of the state or not, not past another state. Can you help us with that? Um, we don't even know how mm -hmm. to write a letter. I created wow. a recipe for Joshua. I took mm -hmm. the coolest picture ever. Joshua was, had a 40, 43 inch vertical. He's just a madman mm -hmm. jumping, right? Mm -hmm. He was oh. dumped over the pile and a photographer caught him blocking a field goal way above. It looked like it was superimposed, but it was mm -hmm. right there. We put that on a resume. We put his brother's uh, NFL accomplishments because I told Josh, don't take this as a slam or being compared. Mm -hmm. They'll probably believe if your brother went to the NFL, it's probably genetic. They'll look at yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One scholarship. He never paid a dime for undergraduate. And he's a writer today. So wow. I really think that it's important. And it's important to know what it is they want to do. Our baby boy, he wanted to go to one school, Bowling Green State University. I tried everything to get him to apply to something else. And he said, but that's the only school I want to go to. I want to go, I want to go to a business school. So guess what he did? He went to Bowling Green and he went mm -hmm. to the business school. He now owns his own business. He is a marketing director for another company and he's doing amazing because he followed wow. his Yes. He found the dream, and we just become the wind beneath their sails. That's so what we do. Parents, if you're listening out there and you need a way, like a roadmap or a blueprint, uh, nothing is promised. So what Aunt Debbie is just trying to tell you is if you find something that your child really, really loves, help yeah. them in the background, do the research, and then hire Aunt Debbie, and then she'll help navigate the success. That's Anything it. else out here on Debbie that we missed that you want to touch upon? Just that it's a partnership. Just always understand you and your child are embarking on a partnership. This may sound mm -hmm. hilarious or too much, but don't be afraid when your child gets to that age, particularly say for me, it's that, that line in the sand, ninth grade, magic happens in ninth grade. Your child could have had a horrible middle school experience. But ninth grade, everything starts again. They get a new GPA. They get another chance. Sometimes they go into it. Most of the time, they're going to a different school. Mm -hmm. and get a contract with them. Oh. And you tell them, I'm willing to be your coach. This is what we're going to do. You tell me if you, if you can. And let them come up with things. What, what, how, do I, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. And be, be okay with them telling you things that you don't want to hear. Trust me on this. Be okay with it. I used to sit on my hands. Man. Or when your feelings get hurt, when your parent, when your child looks at you, you guys know I talk a lot. I love to talk, but I have learned to listen because my child would say, well, I can't get another word. As soon as I start talking, you start talking. I thought, oh, wow. Okay. okay. They will tell you. These kids will tell you. Okay. I learned that when they're having a bad mm -hmm. day, the worst mm -hmm. thing you can do is start giving advice. If they just mm -hmm. lost a game, if they just failed a test, the first, they just want to hug and they want to be left alone. 
they'll get around to talking about it. But the worst thing you can do is, what do you think you should have studied longer? What do you oh, think? You, they'll lose their minds. I had to learn that when they walk off that field, when they come out of that classroom and it hasn't worked that day, I just give them a hug. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's tough, buddy, huh? You know, it's just tough. And you just walk it out. You, you walk, walk it out. With them. Yes. Well, indeed. I want to thank you so much, Aunt Debbie. Um, oh. Guys, please go out. Amazon, it's available. Coaching the Dream, written by my aunt, Aunt Deborah Johnson. We love you. Thank uh, you. Before we go, last time, your contact information, please. They can contact me at DJ the football mom at Gmail. And they can catch, <laughs> catch me on, on Facebook at uh, Coaching the Dream book or on oh. IG. They can get me at the DJ the football mom. Thanks we so love much. you. Thank you for love sharing you. your wisdom with us. And I really hope that somebody will be able to learn from you and help their children be a success. We love you. Thank love you, everybody, you. for watching. This is 15 Minutes Thank of Fame with Deborah Johnson. Bye.